This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on EP Environmental Science review on a super fun site, a classic well-known pollution site called Love Canal. So Love Canal is a great example of a industrial chemical wasting dump next to a built up and populated residential area in Niagara Falls, New York in the United States, right next to Niagara Falls. And this was a major pollution and environmental disaster that was also the first time where the federal government got involved to sue the company that was responsible for this chemical dumping and the issues that the residents had both with illnesses and with birth defects. So Love Canal is a small neighborhood that is in the eastern section of Niagara Falls, as in the city limits, and it was mostly middle to low income residents and smaller houses built around this central canal. Now, the historical perspective is a gentleman called William T. Love in the 1890s. He was an entrepreneur and industrial man. He wanted to construct a canal that would transport or redirect water from Lake Ontario or Lake Erie to Lake Ontario as an additional water source and water navigation in addition to Niagara River with the falls. So this would bring in increased industrial activity, residents, money, economy, it'd be good for the whole area. This is a very large populated area next to Buffalo as well, New York. So the, the current population of Niagara Falls is around 48,000, but it was a lot higher back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. It was a hub for certain industries like plastics, and solutions, and it was a very bustling industrial town. And Love Canal was the starting point of this canal that William T. Love wanted to build. But unfortunately, in the 1920s came the Great Depression, so the money kind of dried up and there wasn't enough money to continue building the canal. So the first section of the canal, which is off Niagara River, where it is right now in Niagara Falls, is what remains of this canal being built. Now, since then, over the 20th century, going through from the 1920s up through to the 1940s into the 50s, the city of Niagara Falls actually purchased or used the area for its own municipal dumping of waste. So as Mr. Love wanted to build this canal, they also wanted to build low-income housing around the area to really stimulate the growth of this part of Niagara Falls. So it kind of like got built up, but the canal was never finished. So the canal was kind of like laid over the grass over time and some soil and there was playgrounds and kids would play. And then what happened was the dumping continued with the town or city of Niagara Falls. But then this private industrial company came in called Hooker Chemical Company. It was based in Rochester, just down the road. And it was a industrial company producing chloroalkali products, which is mostly sodium chloride solutions, which is one of the big industries in the area at the time. And the main product is chlorine. So they make these solutions for pharmaceutical companies, solvents in construction materials. So it was a big industry that was in high demand in the area and Hooker Company came into Love Canal area of Niagara Falls and placed its its factory, its, its industrial buildings right there. And due to the lack of oversight, the lack of rules, both in local government, county, state, and federal, there was very little oversight or, or, or rules governing the waste and the dumping of industrial waste and how to clean it up, or if any. And basically it was once the company owned the land it was on, that land was free to be used as the company saw fit or what they want to do. So the company started to get rid of their industrial waste, their dumping waste, in this Love Canal region, this, this area of the canal that was unfinished, and the waste started to pour out of these industrial buildings and from 1942 to 1953. Now in 1953, the chemical company Hooker actually sold the area of Love Canal to the Niagara Falls Board of Education. It was an open plot of land, and the one condition that Hooker did in the, in the contract to sell the, the land that they were dumping their waste in to this Board of Ed, it was sold for $1, basically just to cover the uh, 
the legal side of it of paying money for this site they were told or they told the board of ed that they were not accountable or not held responsible for the waste that was in the ground now this waste was partly in drums these large metal drums and some waste that was disposed of just out in the open underground now they did put or the hooker company did do investigations in the soil and the soil layers and found that it was a bunch of different layers of clay some hard some soft clay and the so-called experts for this company that i'm sure were very well um enticed to say yes to the company because they're hired by the company themselves to approve that the soil and the clay was absolutely fine and it would hold and trap the chemicals and there'd be no leakage no pollution no some sort of leachate that would leave the area and everything would be fine and this clay would do its job and to trap and contain all the chemicals now the chemicals it wasn't a little bit it was over 21,000 tons of very toxic very hazardous waste that came out of these industries over the course of 11 years now Ket hooker had other locations around the area and in total between 1942 and 1975 for those uh, 33 years had disposed of and contaminated the ground worth of uh, nearly 200,000 tons of chemical waste which is insane because there was no oversight there was no agencies there was no one no epa really to say hey what are you doing hey let's clean this up how are you going to dispose of it there was nothing it was just oh the land's yours dispose of it as you want but the issue was the land was now sold to the board of ed that built a school right in the middle of this love canal area this small 0.28 uh, square kilometers or 0.11 square miles of area with low-income housing, young kids, young families, women that were pregnant or going to get pregnant, and all hang around this area that they thought was fine. There was no signs, no warnings, nothing about the buried toxic waste that was just sitting there yards away from these people's backyards, basements, and homes. After Hooker Company had kind of moved on from the site in Love Canal, sold the land to the Board of Ed, the Board of Ed built a school, elementary school, that contained 440 students and, of course, the low-income housing all around the area adjacent and next to Love Canal. The company moved on. They thought they were out of the, out of the woods, so to speak. They were, there was no kind of connection between the, the pollution that's under the ground to them and there'd be no issues. And they kind of left kind of with a, a clear conscience, so to speak. However, of the 1950s into the 1960s, population grew. It was a large industrial area in Niagara Falls. And around Love Canal, residents started to mention and take note of issues. And they felt sick and had illnesses. And they started to go to the hospital. And there's a lot of these breakout issues, uh, both illness and health and well-being, of all residents, both young and old, that were living around this Love Canal section. And when the rains heavily during certain times of the year, the water would rise up and, and in basements and backyards it'd see chemical leachate and different colors and different levels of slime and sludge coming out of the ground. Kids were playing in the mud puddles and playing in these chemical uh, cesspits, so to speak. And they started to have all these illnesses and people complained to the local town, the county and the state. And eventually Niagara Falls and these other agencies started to bring people into the area to investigate, to do samples, to do uh, interviews and to see what's going on in this area because of all the complaints. So around the late 70s, there were people coming in to do samples and... After an extensive investigation of 6,000 samples taken around the area, this small area on Love Canal, they found 200 hazardous organic chemical compounds that were in the soil, that were leaching out through the percolated water, through the ground, and the drums that were disposed of by the company Hooker uh, before 1953 were starting to rust and break down. Over 20 years, they started to actually decompose and, and degrade and allow the toxic hazardous waste to seep out. So the samples came back with a myriad of these very hazardous, toxic, in some cases fatal, 
byproducts and pollutants that were found in the Love Canal area that were linked back to the byproducts of making the solutions that the company made and the lack of oversight for how to dump waste into the environment and the issue of the clay not being able to effectively hold the contaminants from the leachate and moving with the water as it flowed through the ground after heavy rain. So some of the ones were dioxin and benzene. These are the most, some of the most toxic and most hazardous chemicals that mankind has made through industrial processes. And these were just leaking out into people's backyards and basements and kids were playing in these areas that were contaminated and they had no idea. There's no signs, no warnings, no education, no barriers, nothing. Just these kids were just left to their own devices playing this toxic waste. And as you can see, the list of issues, of health issues linked to these chemicals are very serious. In some cases, fatal. So as a response to all the residents complaining, the health issues, and then you had the investigative authorities coming in to the Love Canal, taking samples, figuring out this is a highly contaminated hazardous area, not good for human population. And because of this company and the byproducts and the disposal methods and the lack of worrying about the issues going forward and how the the pollution would be contained within the clay soil layers, that the local authorities took action, brought in surveyors, brought in scientists to figure out what they could do to remediate the area, both physically and with the human population. So they first started in the southern portion of Love Canal, closer to Niagara River, and this is 1977, they started to put in these wells, these 170 wells installed in the grid system to figure out where the contaminants was, the movement, percolation, and leachate. And obviously samples taken, and there was consistently amount of hazardous waste that was present. Then they started to build these drains, these big barrier drains that went down around 10, 15, 20 feet down into the clay soil, either side of Love Canal, either side towards 99th Street and 97th Street. And they would basically be there to collect any flowing water or flowing chemicals as leachate through the soil and collect in these barrier drains that were obviously a bit lower than the Love Canal in terms of drainage, so the gravity would do its thing, and drain into this barrier and collect the leachate, collect the chemicals. And then they had a pumping system from these drains to an on-site leachate collection building or contamination plant. And this facility would basically receive all of the pumped water and contaminated leachate to this plant back in 1979. And it would A, take it away from the soil, B, try to create a less hazardous material, which the most common was, is to include it into a, or make it into a sludge. And this would eradicate a lot of the chemical contaminations. And they would put a cap, a clay cap, over the Love Canal. So on top of the grass that had grown, this open area that was the dumping ground for the waste, both for the township, or the city, before 1942, and then obviously for Hooker Company for those 11 years. So they'd put a big, thick... Well, they found that Hooker had a cap on there when they left in 53. They said that it was three feet deep. It actually was no more than a few inches deep. So they lied about that. But then the, the actual remediation plan was to have a three feet thick cap of clay on top of the Love Canal. So it would actually create this kind of like mound on top and would then obviously reduce the amount of water that was kind of getting down into the Love Canal area. And if any water did get down, it would be then monitored by the wells and then caught by the drains and pumped to the leachate plant that's on site. So their plan looked like this. So this is a basic schematic or a side profile view of the Love Canal transect of the area. And Love Canal is in the center where the dumping ground was situated. 
and the layers of clay are seen as soft layer clay over a glacial till and below that the bedrock would be more of a dolomite sedimentary rock then the layers of hard clay and you see the basements of the different houses next to the roads both 97th street and 99th street and then i love canals right smack in the middle and again that was where the school was built and the playgrounds were built and kids would play on this grassy area that was kind of like disused after hooker left in 53. so these both residential sewer drains on under the uh, streets of 97th Street and 99th Street. Plus, you had these large barrier drains that were built in between the basements, actually underneath the backyards of these houses, uh, going down between 15 feet, 20 feet into the soft clay layer, and then pumping the contaminants to the leachate treatment plants. So with AP Environmental Science, with apes, you have a combination of both the environment, the physical earth component, and the human anthropogenic part where you have, in this case with Love Canal, you have the human side with the industries and the economy and business making money on these products and just discarding the waste. And you also have the other side of it where the effect of these wastes on the local residents. Now, I don't think that Hooker had much of a conscience when it came to selling the land. They knew had 21,000 tons of chemical and hazardous and toxic waste buried under this small area of Love Canal and sold it to a board of ed. They knew were going to build a school there on top of the waste dumping ground because of the newly built residential areas for low income people. Now, there's many reasons why this would have happened in terms of why and how and, and the effects, but the issues were evident. The local residents became sick and ill and had illnesses and had terrible birth defects from pregnant women giving birth to these beautiful kids that unfortunately had these horrific health and biological issues, a wide range of issues that they had that were, that were linked to and connected to the exposure to these hazardous chemicals. So a relocation plan was put in place in 1978 after the residents had the people come in to test the area and they found it to be hazardous. And they first started in 78 with women that were pregnant and children that are under two being moved away first. Now this is the government basically buying out their house and allowing them to have money to move to a new area that was a safer with less waste and contamination well five days after this they started to relocate nearly 240 families from the area basically they were like oh this is not good we can't just do the these people we have to do everyone so the nearest families to the love canal site were then evacuated and the government were was to buy these families homes and it was finalized by january of 79 so by 1980 the federal government, the Congress, got involved seeing this huge environmental disaster basically unfolding in Love Canal. They took a stand, and it was the first time ever that they put so much money into one site to actively relocate more families, actually 700 families in total at that time by May of 1980, and they put in $20 million, which is a lot of money in 1980, $20 million into the relocation efforts to buy in houses and moving these people to safer environments. So once the people were out of Love Canal area, they started to demolish the houses and produce more of an of a, of a empty landscape in order to properly remediate the area, sample the area, and have less issues of people moving into the area. And by 1988, they actually deemed the area to be safe to live, which again was a little bit too soon. And still today, the area remains kind of empty, demolished houses all around the Love Canal area, and no one lives there anymore. There's still communities that live nearby, but not adjacent or right next to Love Canal itself. In addition to the residents being evacuated, the illnesses, different birth defects, and horrible biological issues, 
and the actual soil and land and area being remediated and having this long-term cleanup process happen and the feds been involved and it being a super fun site so it's a matter of great urgency and importance in terms of the cleanup of the waste and the amount of money that can be put towards this cleanup both from a local state and national governing body so the epa actually sued the company hooker company for 117 million dollars which was kind of like a groundbreaking example or development for a government agency to go after that private company to pay for any damages in terms of the waste in terms of the illnesses and get some sort of repercussions for their behavior and their antics of disposing this waste now again you can argue that it was done with no governing body and no laws in place at that time during the 40s and 50s so in terms of them owning the land they were kind of legally okay to do this but the extent of the damages and the waste was so horrific and so tragically large that there had to be some repercussions put on this company and the epa did that with this groundbreaking lawsuit there were over 725 mortalities due to the chemical exposure at the location, the evacuation, 900 homes repossessed and then basically bulldozed down by the government to make room for this remediation progress. It was the insulation of these samples and wells and drains and treatment plants. And in addition to that, you had this long-term chronic severe health issues from the residents of Love Canal and some of the birth defects were absolutely horrific. I mean, some of the babies were born with club foot, web toes, no diaphragm, lung D formation and, and issues of the lungs, issues with their ureter and deafness in certain ears, eye issues, one kidney, so you're born without, without two kidneys, uh, ears were turned uh, down and extra ear, uh, extra toe. So these chemicals obviously had a great impact on the unborn fetus and the development of the fetus within the womb of the, of, of the pregnant women and obviously being born like this because of these of the waste interaction has had horrible repercussions for these poor innocent babies that were just born in the wrong place at the wrong time unfortunately and the parents had no real knowledge of or or they couldn't help this because they lived in this area because they are probably low income and couldn't afford to move then you also had the high levels of cancer that were recorded in the area due to the exposure long term of these chemicals so love canal stands as that major example of how previous or lack thereof regulations covering waste disposal and contamination of soil and the inability to made aware to the public and residents who live there by the company by the at fault party just stands to show how negligent companies and industries are because of the waste and the lack of caring of what happens later and also the money side of it it must be ex very expensive to properly dispose of and create a chemically inert or safe byproduct from the from these industries so to save money just bury it in the ground and hopefully these drums last and don't decompose and there's no effect and hopefully the clay would do its job well it obviously didn't and the effects are, are, are apparent and this stands as a fantastic case study for any apes class around the country as a thing of pollution contamination authorities get involved clean up and remediation and the effect on humans thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you like it please subscribe and hit the like button if you like more on this content please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science